This show is proudly brought to you by the Hashtag Me Network. Kia ora and thanks so much for downloading episode 65 of Access Granted, a weekly Kiwi tech and media podcast. I'm Raj, my background's in film, design, media and making things happen. And I'm Mike and my background is explaining stuff, connecting people and getting things done. And you're here because you're a Kiwi that either works in or has a great passion for tech or media in New Zealand. This week we have a Access Granted special, Sister Mira, with Mauricio Fritas, where we talk about many, many things, including Windows Phone versus Android, and the security issues that go across all the platforms, and the update cycles. He also shows off a wearable gadget that he's got at the moment that he's really liking, and then we rant about clueless drivers distracted by their tech. Enjoy. Right, we're here at Golding's Free Dive with Mauricio. We're talking about ranting, we're talking about... Yep. Sister Mira out there today. It's a nice Thursday evening-ish. The first Sister Mira is that Miramar Mike is not here. Yeah, so there's an error right there. There's a fail right yep. there. He just <laughs> left the building, so that's a fail. Yeah, that's a fail, yeah. Mm. He knows it. He's apologised. Yeah. But he can't have this beautiful whiskey that yep. we are enjoying He's right having here. whiskey, waiting for the pizza, mm. the usual pizza. So pizza, nice. Yeah. And so, Mauricio, what's new with you? What's on your mind? My, on my mind is that, uh, first I was talking here before, is that my, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, my wife, so okay. I know that she doesn't listen to the podcast. So that's oh, so you're fine. Yeah. So this is almost like a little venting session, just personal venting. In the last, the last <laughs> year, or the last 18 months, mm. she managed to go through three handsets. Right. So three, you're about phones? Yeah. Handset. Three, three smartphones that... Dropped, on the, you know, they just dropped, broken screen, can't fix because oh, you go to some places and these places they have all these iPhones and Samsung Galaxy screens, but they don't carry Microsoft Nokia Lumia screens. Ah, so, so she was using a Nokia Windows phone, Windows yeah. phone, right. Lumia devices. They're very good and stuff. So yeah. finally, I actually I bought for myself a very nice uh, OtterBox case. Yeah. Protected the phone and it, it looks like a, a heavy duty case. Not too bad. I mean, in terms of size and doesn't add much weight to the phone. Yeah. So I told her when she broke the last one, I said, okay, you, you can. I run out of Windows phones at home. Yeah, so you had an inventory, did you? I had, a, I, I had a three Windows phones at home right. and I run out of that. So I told her, you're going to have to use one of the, the Android devices from now on because I. I yeah, we don't have We're any. not getting any more in stock, that's no. it. <laughs> so I handed her one of the HTC devices and she's happily using that, which is interesting because when I gave her an Android a year ago, yeah. she absolutely hated it. But my theory is that she had a feature phone before, then she started using Windows Phone as her first smartphone. Right. And I think that that was a good entry level phone for someone that never used a smartphone before and then she when she first started using she was always doing things the same way in windows phone yeah. and when she was first exposed to android she was like no nope, i don't like this so she went back to the windows phone but now a year and a half two years later yeah when i handed her the android i think she was a lot more used to the idea of doing things on the phone and she was an unhappy with the android even though so windows is like a, my first smartphone Fisher Price, my first smartphone. Is, is that how it works? I don't know if that's learning, the thing. Learning but, plates. But I, I, I think I, I just said to, to Mike, I think that she graduated to do to Android. Yeah. So, <laughs> does she have a, some sort of celebration? But, but <laughs> the, the, the thing is, she only got the new handset after we got an auto case for her. All oh, right. So. She was without, without a phone for a little bit, I guess. No, no, no. She was still using the one with the broken screen. Oh, right. Because it was just the top glass broken, not the, the oh, touch. Okay. So, so you didn't hand over the good one? I didn't hand over the good one until yeah. we, we, had, we bought an uh, OtterBox uh, <laughs> new case on Amazon. And only after that, landed at home. And I, I personally put the, the new smartphone in the case. That's when yeah. I handed it to her because to make sure that... Well, you're the IT department, basically. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that's true. At home, mm. you have yeah, the IT department. Yeah, anyway, I get that so, a lot. That was the first rant, but that is a good <laughs> lead into the Android world thing. Yeah. Have you heard about this 
Android vulnerability that some analysts say could be affecting anything from 750 to 900 million devices. Whoa. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of other devices, not just smartphones, right? Yeah. Yeah, with Android on it. Yeah, but this one is particularly yeah. nasty because oh, yeah. the way it works is that almost all the devices that are out there, they use a single library to show images that I received from messages, from right. MMS. So it's all in one place. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a vulnerability that, that would allow anyone sending a special photo to you to take over your device. Ah, so there's a code embedded in the photo, yeah. something nasty. Something like that. Okay. But the thing is, every manufacturer uses the same code to do this, to show this image. Oh, uh oh. Which means that every Android device from two point something up to so many the years. most recent ones wow. have this thing. And, the, and then that would be fine if you were talking about, you know, desktop computers where someone notify Microsoft about vulnerability or notify Apple about vulnerability. Apple not that much because Apple is quite slow to release security updates. Yeah. But Microsoft, they have this schedule and if they have something that's really bad, they even release out of band, which means out of their normal schedule. Oh, okay, yeah. So basically, you report a vulnerability to Microsoft. They will test, they will do a fix. And there is an agreement, a gentleman's agreement in the industry that if you report a vulnerability, you're not going to disclose it until there is a fix for it being released. Okay. So what happens is like... So then no one's aware that it's there and yeah. exploit it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the idea. Unless, yeah. of course, someone else finds it. But <laughs> if, if you're a researcher and you find something, you report to, to Microsoft, Microsoft, okay, give me a month to work on this to fix. And Microsoft, they have a, a timetable, and every second Tuesday of the month, they release updates, which is mm. Wednesday, New Zealand time. Right. So 7 a.m., when, second Wednesday of the month, you have updates. Most of them are secret updates, but Microsoft bunches up a, a lots of bug fixes and yeah. all this stuff as well. Now, however, if someone says, look, Microsoft, here's a vulnerability, and the bad thing is, People out there already know about it and are already using it. Mm. That's when Microsoft said, okay, we had to do an out of band update. That's an emergency, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. they basically do the fix, test it, and release it. And then yeah. this one will come out anytime, not necessarily the second Tuesday of the month. Okay. Anyway, so you expect some companies to act like this. You, yeah. You report an, a, a problem and the company will say, oh, this is serious, I'll fix it. After I fix and start releasing the updates, when you can disclose so people know, like, yeah. obviously you have mitigation, uh, uh, you have workarounds, for example, um, if Microsoft finds a problem in a browser when you load a specific feature, you could, for example, have, if you have an IT department inside your company, uh, push out a security policy not to load some device drivers or not to visit, block some sites or do something. So when people release some information, they say, you know, a fix is available. In the meantime, until you apply the fix, you can do this to reduce the risk. Yeah. So, yeah, in the meantime, here's a yeah. quick fix, I guess. What's the problem with the Android? Yeah, so well, what's up with Android? Well, the problem with the yeah. Android is that the way that works is Google makes the fix, yeah. Google supplies the fix to the device manufacturers, Samsung, LG, HTC, and, you know, the other ones. every single <laughs> other device, because... Yeah. Then, these people will have to fit this fix in their code, yeah. and they have codes for each one of their devices, and when you think about things like Samsung, you're talking about... Yeah a lot of devices and that's not only for the existing devices but previous versions oh, as right. well. Oh right, yeah, true. Yeah. Because if they are there. Mm. Once they do this and after they, they do the internal test, they yeah. send this to the operators and say, hey look, can you please test this and approve? Then the operators, Vodafone, Telecom, to the Grease will put this on the device, test, yeah. see if they're not causing any problem in the networks and tell Samsung, yeah, you're good to go, you can push this out to the devices. Right. So all this process can take that anything for so like process. three months, six months. Sometimes you have... Oh, so by then your phone's bricked. 
so it's a bit late. <laughs> then, then you have other things, like for example, some manufacturers, they have a life for the device that's very, very short. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You buy a device now, and some manufacturers don't release updates for the device ever. Okay. And some, some device manufacturers are very good, like for example the HTC, HTC the HTC One M7 that was released two and a half, three years ago. We still got an update to uh, Android 5.1 mm -hmm. um, from a couple of months back. But so this is probably going to be the last update uh -huh. officially because there is no really reason for them to keep you know, doing the updates for devices that stopped selling two, three years ago. Mm. But, but they're then, still out there, those devices. But then so there's a vulnerability, right? They're then, still out there. That's why they say, you know, you may have anything like 700 to 850, 900 million devices. And then we talk about those devices that never get an update because they're not even manufactured by big names. You know, small companies, okay, yeah, you know, yeah. that in China, they make millions of devices, flood the market with these devices. <laughs> Some of them even cause problems because, for example, a lot of these manufacturers, they, to reduce costs, they have devices that came out with a single IMA number. Okay. IMA is the identification number for the devices. It's like a serial number for mobile phones. Yep. And what happens is that, and, and I, we saw this happening a lot, um, when you report a phone stolen or lost to an operator, they block an IMA, mm. and that IMA is once blocked, yeah. it won't work in any other network in New Zealand. <laughs> and what happens if you buy a one of these Chinese very cheap imports, no brand phones? Yeah, if they all share the same IMA, oh. and they bring like a oh, hundred to the right. country, and someone reports the device stole or lost, yeah, and if someone just goes back and report this to Vodafone, and Vodafone lock the device, and then. It's locked for telecom in, in two degrees as well. With Spark, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you instantly block all those Everyone. hundred devices. Yeah. Not only that. Yeah, know? yeah. So that's another reason. How did they come up with that system? How did they... Because they just clone the device. They make it really cheap okay. instead of making individuals. It's... So that's why you don't buy off-brand if you can. Anyway, yeah. so, so the whole thing is, how broken is the whole update system for devices such as Android? And that, don't get me wrong, that's the case for Windows Phones as well. Yeah. Although these days when we talk about Windows Phone, we only talk about Microsoft. But up until some time ago, we had Windows Phone from LG, from Samsung, from HTC, from yeah. Microsoft. Same thing applies. Microsoft makes this update, sends out to the manufacturers, the manufacturers change, put on the device for testing, send to the operators, the operators test, go back to the device and say, yep, okay, you can push yeah. this out. If the operators have no interest because they say, oh, we have a very small number of these devices sold, so yeah. we won't bother testing, you're just out there. It's, it's just, just more just bugs like this. all over so the place. So really they should, they should, oh, some of the manufacturers are doing some work on that, for example, yeah. Um, some of the Google baked in functionality is now no longer um, part of the system. Okay, yeah. There are actually small apps that they can update through the um, Play Store. Yeah. So, for example, you have an so HTC device. It's not all just on there. Yeah, yeah so you have an HTC device. You're gonna see that the browser, the mail, and some of the functionality like the the uh, lock screen, all these things that used to be back in the system are now actually separate bits that they can push individually without having to wait for the whole approval process. Okay. But it still leaves behind all the old things, all yeah, the old sure. hardware. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I don't know. Anyway, they have to change. This needs to change because. How can they change? Rick? What would be the way to do? It? Well, what they're doing now of making this separate from the system is one way. Right? Yeah. And so they change one little thing yeah. that needs to be changed, right? Yeah. But reality yeah. is that malware for mobile devices exists. Yeah. It's out there. Actually, it's collecting data. Yeah. It's using your phone for SMS that someone's getting the money for, and it's out there. Yeah. And based on the number. Of Devices that is exist. Yeah. We are talking about you know 
millions of people that don't even know that they could be vulnerable to something. So why don't, just like the PC manufacturers back in the day, why don't they load antivirus software onto the phones as a standard app or a standard protocol in the background, just checking for the stuff? So, you know, like you used to get Norton's, which was a pain in the ass anyway, but you used to get Norton's on any PC you bought, well, right? I run Norton on my PC. Yeah. So, do, um, does Windows phone, Windows phone come with that stuff? It doesn't, eh? No, Windows phone doesn't. So I just uh, want to, can uh, these guys do that? I have heard of malware for Windows because they use a very different approach for uh, running the app. The app is sandbox. Okay. But yeah. for Android, I, I yeah, run... Android's all over the place, I, right? I run Norton on my Android. Right. But see, people don't know to do but, that for phones. Because they go, oh, your laptop, yeah. Desktop, but, yeah. But mobile, oh, it's yeah. safe, right? <laughs> but they don't know. Or but they don't people know. don't know about it. Yeah. And the reality is that for manufacturers... Yeah. Even putting the uh, software there on the phone, it will cost them something. Yeah, it's time and effort. Time, testing yeah. and stuff. Yeah. For users, you might get the phone with uh, Norton or Trend Micro or whatever else. Yeah. And usually these ones come as like one year... Uh, subscription, right? Subscription. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, you have to pay. And then a lot of people will just... Oh, no, I never got a virus, so don't worry, I won't need it. Yeah, I never <laughs> got a virus. The fact that I was running an antivirus doesn't, right. doesn't tell me anything. I haven't had one in the whole year, I don't need that. <laughs> so I don't know. Hey. Well, you could have just go Apple phone in the end, couldn't you? <laughs> but then that has its own issues as well. Yes, that's right. At least we don't get viruses, but... Hey. Yeah. Oh, look at that, pizza time. Cool, thank you. But, look, before we have the stop for the pizza... Mm. Stickers. Yes, so stickers. access granted, or Mike mainly. I designed it, but he got got it done. We finally got some stickers to give away to people. So we're going to be selective at first because we only got a, a short run done, and uh, we want people to put them on their devices or. You have to put somewhere. it on your laptop. Yeah. Some people like to put things like I have a couple of Tulu and then yeah, yeah. and you probably uh, have a snapper one. Spaghetti, uh, flying spaghetti monster deck. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. Stickers in my laptop. I'm yeah. going to put one of those. Mm. Hey, that, this is a nice whiskey. Yeah, what is this? Oh, I like it. Eh? Oh, look at this. Anyway, let's take a quiet breather and we'll have our pizza. Right, so. That, that was good. Good that calzone, was a, right? A, it wasn't a pizza. That was a good calzone. We're done here. Another one, Mike Masello. Well, just yeah, <laughs> just tell Mike, you know, you leave early, you don't get the food. That's right. Yeah. Hi. Right. I'm wearing a thing. So what is this thing? Well, it looks like a watch. It does look like a black watch. A regular Schmojo watch. Well, it's not a digital. It is an oh, analog, 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 analog watch with hands, hour and minute hands, and a little circle in the middle with a little hand that you might think is a seconds or something but actually mm. it goes from zero to 100 wow that's pretty fast yeah well <laughs> depends on how much i, I run how fast I, I go this is actually a um it's a tracker you know like uh, uh was it a steps tracks your steps it, or it tracks my steps right. and it tracks my sleep Right. So you know how you Sleep get well. some device from Fitbit, from Garmin, and others that you can track your steps. So yeah. the difference between this and the others is that instead of being a digital device, like, I mean, it is a digital device inside, right. but the interface, instead of the interface being digital, like... There's an analog facade it, on the top. It's an analog. So it looks yeah. like a watch. You can wear it as a watch, and people won't know the difference. But if you look like... On the face, you're going to see, instead of 2,000 steps, you're going to see the, the hand pointing to the second number, which is 20%, and so on. So the, the second, uh, the, the, the little hand goes from 0 to 100, which is from 0 to 100% of your goal. My goal is 10,000 steps. So each you're one of the, the stops is 10%. Oh, you're 10. Because I already... And if you go over 100, then it just goes back to zero. Oh, so you've wrapped yourself already. So I'm already wrapped here. I'm already about 11,000 steps today. Well done. Farah, where have you been walking around? I walk. I walk like... Everywhere. Yeah. 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 So well, well today. The thing is... Interesting thing is, they have two models. Mm -hmm. It's a French company. They just start selling here in New Zealand uh, through No Limits or something. And I, I'm not affiliated with them, so I'm just saying where you find it. But... Interesting thing is they have two models. 
The cheaper one, that's the one that you find in the stores here, costs 200 and something dollars. Yeah. It's actually made in China. It oh. got a glass on top. Oh. And when so it, and you when just it, tapped it oh. and then the hands started moving. Yeah, because like enough, I woke up. Yeah, because of an alarm as well. Oh. So when you tap, yeah. it shows uh, what time the alarm is. It looked like set, it, it so. freaked out. It looked like yeah. it put his hands up. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this one is made in China. Yeah. It's glass in um, a grey colour in uh, a plastic uh, strap, wrist strap. But they have a new, a different model, which is actually made in Switzerland, oh. and it's a sapphire uh, glass on top, yeah. so it doesn't scratch like yeah. the glass, and it's leather strap instead oh, of rubber, right. rubber plastic. What does that go for, you reckon? Well, overseas I think that costs about three or four times more than this one. Mm. So I would say that probably would cost him in about seven to eight hundred bucks. I don't know the price because I haven't seen one yet. Yeah. Um, I'm actually talking, they are distributed in New Zealand by Ingram Micro, so I'm actually waiting because they, they currently have a few show models on their road show mm. and they're going to send me the, the, the leather uh, sapphire Swiss made nice one, one later so yeah. I can compare with this one that All I got right. from them before. So what's the difference or what benefits? Bring come from wearing that one rather than the other ones. Well, the I have I have Fitbit at home. Yeah, yeah. I have the Fitbit Surge, which is like the one with a big watch face, but it's a digital watch face. Mm. I have the Fitbit Charge, which is a smaller one with a digital display. But the thing is, sometimes you don't want to uh, carry a rubber thing in your wrist. You want to wear a real watch. Yeah. Because yeah. you're going to somewhere like a, a dinner, a black tie dinner time. Well, black tie actually you're not supposed to wear, wear a watch at all. But you know, <laughs> you are not fancy. Yeah, you're going somewhere you're fancy. Nice. You want to wear your watch instead of wearing a tracker. Yeah. So right. what you can do with Fitbit, you can have multiple devices into account. And I have two Fitbit. So what, most of the days I wear the Surge, which is the watch. Mm. But sometimes when I wear my real watch, mm. I put the Fitbit charge which is the, the small tracker right. on my other wrist. Okay. But then people yeah. say, why you have two things? Why you have bangles on your other wrist? You know? <laughs> so the way things, the cool thing about it is it looks like an analog watch, mm. you know? So and it's a you wear tracker like, by stuff. You yeah. don't even know it's So there. if people look, you will just think, if they don't know, you will just think it's a normal watch. That's all. Mm. So That's it's cool. pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. I like it because, you know, you can wear it like that. So, so this is something that uh, normals, I call them normals, would yeah. want to buy rather normals, than the yeah, other Because stuff. I'm not normal. No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking uh, yeah. people that aren't into the tech so much. Okay. So, so what happens so now? They'll buy something like this rather than that yeah. geekery, techery uh, exactly. Fitbit, right? Yeah. Mm. So last week I was wearing this and the Fitbit at the same time, one on each wrist. Does that mean you get twice as many hits on the board or no, that's cheating, no. isn't it? No, no, it's not because they, what happens is that they each sync to their own service, so... Ah, so you can't cheat the system. <laughs> I can't cheat. But then what happens is that um, I was trying to see how much is the difference and they're pretty close. They're not exactly the same number because they obviously use different technology to, to measure the steps and the distance yeah. and stuff, but they're very close, like the difference is under 5%. And you don't need to know exactly the steps, how many steps you're doing. You just need to know. Like, I don't care if I'm doing 11,200 steps. Mm. I know that if I've done more than 10,000 steps, okay. I know that if I've done 11,000 steps, okay. I don't need to know exactly the number. Right, right. You know, but just the ballpark's fine. unless you have OCD and, oh, yeah. and you have. So what? Yeah, but what happens if you get an odd number or something? Do you keep walking, or what, and if you don't have enough steps to your room, or to your <laughs> you'd wonder, eh? Hey, what do you do then? You turn around uh, and go back? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, my wife got an, uh, a Fitbit, and she goes like, when we go to bed, we usually go to bed really late. Yeah. We either watching something on TV or reading something before we go to bed. And by the time that we say goodnight, turn off the lights, it's like quarter to midnight or just before midnight. She looks at, oh, I still have 200 steps to, to reach 10,000. <laughs> and I say, well, you still have half an hour to do it. Or, you know, you still have 15 minutes to do it. So you can run around the lounge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got another lawn or something. You can, you can go around the house at midnight and run around it. <laughs> Wake everybody up. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> so anyway, now you don't, you can't go too crazy on this thing. Yeah. You, you've done 10,000 steps. It's one day, diet, one day, yeah, one day you do nine thousand. The other day you do twelve thousand. It's not that you have to do ten thousand every day. You, you know, 
all have done. But I think the main thing is you're doing it. You know, yes. it doesn't matter how many you clock up in the end. Well, that's just, what I do in the morning. Active, right? so yeah, in the morning I walk from from uh, the bus stop to the office, which usually could be just going across the street. Right. But I actually hop off the bus in Thordon okay. and walk here, which is about a 20, 25 minutes walk, and that is about 3,000 steps. That's good. So, be good to early in the morning, I already get 3,000 <laughs> steps just from the start. Yeah, that's a good way to do it, eh? So I mean, by the time I walk into town, I mean, you yeah. just don't have enough time, eh? And, and while walking, while walking, I see all this idiot retard yeah. driving around. <laughs> What, what's the problem with people that drive and don't indicate or keep talking on the phone while driving? Well, or they're selfish and oblivious is what I notice. Just, or just go through yeah. through red lights. What's the problem oh, with that's people? Stupid, eh? yeah. I mean, seriously, it's you're so driving, tense. you're driving, and you have the, the phone in your hand and you keep talking. I mean, 8 a.m. How how is how is the world going to end if you don't <laughs> drive? Pay attention to driving with all the traffic that's around you. Well, no. the world could end quite easily if you're still distracted like that, yeah. I, I, it's, it's but uh, you better to just put the phone down and keep going. It's just incredible. The number of people that yeah. just don't indicate, don't respect, pay their... Oh. They just don't the, care. The, like, other, the other day, the other day I, I put on my Twitter saying, I'm sorry, to, because in Wellington, if you live in Wellington, you see a lot of DC cars. And DC mm. cars are the diplomat cars, cars assigned to embassies. Uh, you do, eh? yeah. So, and you know that cars assigned to embassies, they have a little bit of a leeway, you know, they don't get fines, then, you know, this kind of stuff. And I was just crossing the street in front of Parliament the other day, on the pedestrian crossing, mm. and this guy was waiting for us to, to cross, but he was waving to us to know to, to go faster. All oh, right. So you're crossing on the pedestrian crossing <laughs> where... The cars have to stop and You're wait for you. Fine to do that. Yeah, absolutely fine. The, guy, the guy's waving oh, wow. for you to go faster because he, you no, know, driving his diplomat car, oh, wants to go quarter. through. Yeah, yeah. See, what I mean, would you do in that situation though? You'd go walk it slower, wouldn't you? Walking slower. <laughs> I'm sorry that you have a diplomat car and, and I'm matter. in front of you and you can't run over me. As soon me. as you try to aggravate people like that, they're going to do the opposite of what you want anyway. So just sit there and wait. It's just yeah. incredible how people take it for granted that when they're behind the wheel, they can yeah. do anything. They, they're better than the some, others. Some become just monsters behind the wheel. Yeah. So no, that, that's my my range. Yeah, it drives me nuts guys. too. Yeah, people think they're just you know all powerful when they're in the car and everyone else is a muppet. My wife has been quoted a lot of times today. Yeah, but every time that I'm driving, I see a guy on the on the roundabout turning without indicating or indicating uh, yeah. the wrong way like yeah. he indicates right when he's actually just going straight <laughs> he's indicating right to tell people that he's coming to the roundabout when you don't have to indicate when you come to the roundabout but mm. and then he turns in front of you how many times I told my wife I really really wish I had a car like James Bond you know <laughs> that I could just flick a switch and fire a missile <laughs> in some of these cars <laughs> that don't indicate oh look the guy's not indicating well, there's a start-up idea, eh? Boom! Car missiles. Trackable. Car missiles that yeah. hit people that don't indicate. You can type in the, the number plate and it targets the car. Done. That's a good idea. How's that? They'll only go for the car that got yeah. the number plate. So everyone else is safe. It's just the Muppet <laughs> that decided to ruin everyone's day has a problem. Yep. Heat seeking missile. So what, we need, we, we, <laughs> what we need is a special technology that broadcasts the number plate, hmm. like like they have in airplanes, they broadcast the idea yeah, for the plane. That's right. A yeah. transponder for cars Transpond. that broadcast the car ID, the car yeah. registration number, and then we say, well, we're going to fire a missile on this guy because he's driving, talking while driving on the cell phone, or yeah. he's not indicating, and I'm just going to fire his ass because <laughs> oh, it's, it's We need to pick an activity, either you're talking on the phone or you're driving. You yeah. can't do both. So, seriously, some people just... <laughs> yeah. We need technology to help us clear the streets. Well, maybe the self-driving cars might fix all that drama one day, because then you can talk on the phone the whole time. Self-driving cars, i tell you None what. None of us will be in trouble, because, you know, tell you the what, machines we, will take care of everything. <laughs> I come from Brazil. In yeah. Brazil, we drive on the wrong side of the street, or the right, or the right side, side of the side. Street, yeah, yeah. Depending on how you see it. <laughs> and we don't have many... Most of the imports in Brazil will come with the, the, the steering wheel on the left side because that's how we drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, we drive on the right, so we have the steering wheel on the left. Mm. And there is no reason for you. I mean, it's a country of 250 million people, and there is no reason for you to import a car from England or for whatever yeah. with steering wheel oh, on the right side. side. Or the right side. <laughs> I was on the road with friends one day, many, many years ago, 20, 25 years ago, and I was in the passenger seat, and I looked at the driver and said, are you looking, are you seeing what I'm seeing? And then the driver looked and said, yeah, what's going on? So in front of us, there was a car, and the person on the left side of the car, which is the driver's side of the car mm. in Brazil, yeah. was reading a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the same as in here in New Zealand. You look at it's someone so on the right side of the car reading yeah. a newspaper, you say, that's weird. How, how can that person be reading a newspaper and drive the car at the same time? Because, really, it was, the on the cell phone. it was the first time I ever saw a right hand car in Brazil. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Someone had imported a Japanese car yeah. and was driving the car on the road. And I saw that and I couldn't understand how come. It was the passenger, but you know, if you just look, I thought it was the driver. And I said, yeah. How come the driver is really a newspaper? What's going on? And I told the driver, Self You know what? I, I didn't even realize. I just said, Look, I don't know what this driver is doing. Because I, I thought it was the driver. I don't know what this driver is doing. Just overtake and go away very fast, as fast as we can. Don't, don't, stay, don't stay behind this driver. Oh, that would be hilarious. Just to sit there going, sit in front of him and go, Hey, wait a minute. That car's just reading the paper. Where's the steering wheel? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the day we have, you know, driverless cars, the day yeah. we have these cars, it's going to be like so different. I wonder so if different. that's going to change things for the better. I don't know. People are going to be so freaked out on the street. Because they, um, they won't have control to speed up, slow down, push the horn, get angry at other cars, because everyone will be screaming in at the same pace, right? That's the idea. Like the minority report. <laughs> Everyone's all going to the same place. No one's trying to edge anyone out. Yeah. So maybe that'll actually help things one day. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. We can see and look outside and see how nice and bright it is because winter yes. is on the way out. I mean, it's not obviously not gone, but... Well, we can still feel it in Wellington, that's for sure. Oh, no, it's cold. <laughs> like, this morning was 4 degrees. Yeah. But at least it's not dark at 5 p.m. The light's coming out. Yeah, the sun's coming up a bit earlier. goes home a bit later. It's yeah. good. Mm. And, like, lucky the weekend was nice. Can't, can't yeah. complain about the last weekend. It was nice. Well, I went to Palmer's North to shoot a video, and they must have had torrential rain for 400 days because <laughs> everywhere we went, it felt like we were on a swamp land. <laughs> and, in fact, we got one of our cars, the camera guy's car got stuck in front of Massey University on council land, we learned later, so it wasn't Massey University's land. You had to call a tractor to help we, you we, out? No, we, well, we didn't have a tractor. We had a student with a crazy-ass souped-up car to come and drag <laughs> us out. And then, you know, the vice-chancellor came by just to check if we are OK. And his beast of an islander, he came by and checked as well. But, and I said, well, why is it so, you know, why is it swamp land out here? Because it's been raining for four days or something over there. <laughs> so, you know, you never know where you're going in the country. You end up in swamp land or... Ah, Palmerston North is the country. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're in the country, yeah. yeah. And some say Palmerston North doesn't count anyway, but, um, yeah. Yeah, all right, yeah. I went there and I came out alive. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the plan stuff for next week? So, you're... Next week's ne Microsoft uh, Ignite. Ignite. Yep. They changed the name after 20 years of Microsoft Tech Care, it's Microsoft Ignite. Now, why did they change the name, do you reckon? Well, I don't know. Well, they, they have the Microsoft Ignite conference in America, and that, oh, okay. that is in Europe as well. So, uh, yeah, it basically replaced Tech Care. Was it just us catching up in terms of the brand and all that kind of yeah, thing? I think the branding like, yeah. is more of a, you know, sparking, not related to Spark Telecom, oh, but right. <laughs> sparking, I don't know, creativity, building, creating new stuff, so... Yeah. yeah. What do you reckon is going to be the interesting highlight down there, or up there, for us? The um, interesting thing is that uh, Belfiore, the guy that was originally responsible for smart mobile devices, smartphones... Oh, yeah? And later uh, was responsible for uh, all the... Um, Windows platform, Windows 8 and Windows 10. Oh, 8? Yeah. Zero. He's the, the <laughs> keynote. He's on the keynote. Oh, yeah. So 
that's an interesting thing. Let's see how it goes. Is James Whitaker coming this year? No. no. But I actually saw James Whitaker a um, few months back in Auckland. Yeah. He came down to, to New Zealand again yeah. to talk in a conference. And I was in Auckland, so it was good because then I had breakfast with him, and then he was as good, you know, in person one on one as on, he right? was yeah. at the, the keynote last year. So, yeah. as usual, he was doing uh, do about, shit. Was he talking about hot, make hot shit. tubs again? Or? Yep, he was still talking about hot tubs, <laughs> exactly. But as he said, make good shit. Make good shit, that's the way yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Oh, well, but, thanks for that, and thanks, you've got yeah. your stickers now. I so. have my stickers. If you are the Pat Marie you show up wherever you see me. him. Yep. One of them is going on my laptop, but the others are to distribute there. Absolutely. Thanks a lot again. Yep. Another rant is in the can. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Hashtag me.co.nz.